you can serve a gourmet meal while camping. Nothing better than being outside. Bread is more than just a food. Think of how the word is used. Work that earns a solid income is often referred to as bread and butter. When people break bread, they share more than just a meal. They come together in body and spirit. It is not surprising that making bread outdoors is special. From the beginning of recorded history, bread has been a vital source of food for people around the globe. Over the centuries, it has traveled and evolved, reflecting both the unity and diversity of human culture and the ability of people to adapt to their environment. In this video, I will demonstrate how to bake Japanese souffle pancakes and sourdough French bread using simple camping ovens. I have two different types of ovens. One type is made out of cardboard. This is corrugated cardboard that's covered with ordinary heavy-duty aluminum foil from the kitchen, and I glue that to the cardboard. You've seen this in many videos. Some people have suggested that I try making an oven just purely out of aluminum and not half cardboard. And so I made ovens of the identical size out of aluminum flashing. Flashing is used as roofing materials to keep roofs from leaking. You can buy it at a hardware store. It's easy to cut with tin snips. It's more expensive than the cardboard oven. But uh, I, I made the same ovens and I compared these four ovens, the small ones and the bigger ones, uh, baking the same types of bread. And I used, in all cases, I used a can of Sterno in each oven. And it worked very well. All these ovens bake beautiful bread. Uh, they are a little bit different from each other, though. Uh, the cardboard ovens hold their temperature better because of the insulation and are less affected by outdoor temperature. So these have a more constant temperature and also these ovens can be folded up smaller and easier if you want to put in your backpack. This little oven works really well in a backpack. The, the, these other ovens can be heated to higher temperatures than the cardboard ones. They can be heated to the melting point of aluminum, and that is around 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. The cardboard ovens can only be heated to around 500 degrees Fahrenheit, because that's the flash point that the cardboard will catch fire. So there, there's a difference between them. These hold their temperature better, but it can only be heated to 500. These can be heated super hot to 1,200 degrees. These don't hold their temperature as well, but they do bake very well. I baked bread with all four of the ovens, and it's hard to tell the difference other than this one had more constant temperatures than this one. This one went high and low very, very easily. All four ovens had grates on them made out of barbecue skewers. And I'll show it on the small cardboard oven. The skewers were placed the same height, about six to eight inches above the um, can of sterno. And I just poked it, I poked them through the holes that I put here. And see, so these are ordinary steel barbecue skewers. It went like this. And uh, the bottom of the oven, where is it? Just a minute. The bottom of the oven. There we are. The bottom of the oven 
is uh, aluminum. And so I put the oven on, on this aluminum pan, light the sterno, and then put it on top with the grate. You can see the grate. And instead of just putting the food, which is in a container, the bread in this case, directly on the grate, I insulate the food, the cooking container, with a small pan that has sand in it. This makes the temperature more even when it's cooking. So that makes the temperature even. even. And if I wanted to have a steam oven to keep the temperature lower and constant, I just pour a little bit of water on this. And in fact, making a steam oven like that, pouring water on it, makes it more like a professional oven where they have steam ovens and the, the bread, as an example, rises really high when you put steam uh, into the mix, into the heat. So I put this into the that and then the, that on top. Now I'll show it to you this way how that looks. You can see that's all there. And I've got pictures of it when I'm cooking. You'll see how this looks. And then for a top on the cardboard oven, again I used a piece of cardboard covered with aluminum foil that's glued to the cardboard on top. In this video, I also put a stainless steel lid on top of all four of them. Now the uh, aluminum ovens look the same, but there's no cardboard, and I put the lid like this. So it works really well.
Ooh, that's looking good. Time to take that out. Breakfast is served. Pancake souffle with blueberries served on a bed of spinach. Bon appétit. I think, what shall I try first? Blueberries. Um, and the pancakes are from all the ovens. And this one was my favorite. Look at that. Looks like a donut. Mmm. It's so airy. Mmm. You can serve a gourmet meal while camping. Enjoy the autumn weather. Listen to the birds. Nothing better than being outside. It's super easy and a lot of fun to make authentic French bread when you're camping. All you need is bread flour, salt, yeast, and water. The bread is particularly good because I use a sourdough starter rather than regular bread yeast. I use four cups of unbleached bread flour, one, two, three, four, I add a teaspoon and a half of salt, I stir that in, I add one cup of starter. Mmm, that smells so good. And I stir that together. I'm mixing all of this, this up. I add one cup of water to start, and then I will add additional water as I need it. Now you don't need any fancy mixer or bread machines or anything, you just stir this up. Okay, it's all stirred now. Now I just cover it. And I let it rise overnight in a warm place. If I'm doing this at home, I just put it above the refrigerator. If I'm doing this when I'm camping and I'm near my car, I put it in my car because it stays warm. Um, and depending on the, the weather, it can be near the front dash and the sun can heat it to stay warm in the winter or if, it's, if it gets too warm, you can hide it other places. Now, I will take this and put it on the front dash of my car and then tomorrow, I'll turn it into bread. So this needs to rise overnight, uh, the flavor develops, and then I go to the next step.
Every time I say beauty berries, I want to eat them. <laughs> These are so good. Mmm. There's plenty left there for the wildlife. This looks so good. I can't wait to eat this as dessert. Mmm. You know, a little bit of flour goes a long way. A naturalist, John Muir, would go hiking and be gone for, for weeks at a time and only take bread with him. And people would ask him, well, what type of bread do you like? And he said, bread. <laughs> And that's what I say here. It all tastes a little different, but it's all good. And if you make it with the right ingredients, it's healthy. Let's, let's see what it looks like. Oh man, look at it. Well, it tastes a little bit. Mm. This will be my dessert tonight. A few years ago, I made a video about how to camp and make bread in seven or eight different ways. And I've attached a link to that video. You might find it interesting and useful because although it's old, the methods still work and there are a whole bunch of methods. And each one results in bread. And if you start with healthy ingredients, then the bread's healthy. Now I could put the blueberries in the bread and have blueberry bread. Well, I'm going to enjoy the evening tonight. I especially look forward to being in the hammock. It's going to be a little bit warmer. It's a, there are a few clouds now. And so I won't be quite as cool as I was last night. Until bedtime, I'll be watching the campfire and enjoying campfire therapy, just looking at the flames and imagining the past and what it was like when those trees were alive. It's very soothing to me to, to watch a campfire. I stay comfy warm in my half bridge hammock that's covered with a froth blanket. 
uh, uh, this makes a cocoon. In the south, we use frost blankets like this one to cover our plants so they don't freeze in the winter. And the same thing goes here. They are inexpensive, water repellent, and breathable. And I use binder clips to uh, hold the end together where the, the bridge is. And you can see the bar that goes across to make it a half bridge hammock. And I put a, a zipper on it. Uh, I have a link to a description on how to make a cocoon like this. It's very easy. And inside, you'll see the hammock that Billy Joe a custom made for me. And I've modified it from being a, a gathered end hammock to one end. I took the gathering apart and put a bar that then provides a straight area. So I have plenty of shoulder room. And in here I have a nice winter sleeping bag, down booties to keep me extra warm. And then there's an extra layer in here in this hammock. And underneath it, as an underquilt, I'm using my yoga mat. And that makes an excellent underquilt. And so this is a, an easy way to stay warm on nights that get down below 50 degrees. You may laugh that 50 degrees isn't cold. Uh, well, for those of us in the South, 50 degrees is cold when the usual temperatures, 80s, 90s, 100s, things like that. So uh, I'll stay comfortable and it can even get down into the teens. I've slept in this configuration under snow conditions and I'm perfectly comfortable. <laughs> It's time to hit the sack. I'll watch the fire from the hammock. Oh man, it's a beautiful night. Hear the crickets? Sweet dreams, guys. See you in the morning. Good night. I like to get up before sunrise and watch the birds get up and, and hear the crickets. The nighttime animals transition to the daytime animals. It's so neat.
always leave your campsite cleaner than you found it.